So this is just a short video to show you how to deal with simultaneous equations that have fractions in them. Um, here are two examples. I'm going to start off with number 23 here. So the first equation you see here is a regular simultaneous equation. There's nothing strange about it. This one here, it has fractions. And sometimes that puts off students. So I'm going to show you now how to deal with these fractions. Basically what you want to do is get rid of the fractions. As you see, as soon as you see fractions in an equation, you want to get rid of them. That's my kind of golden rule. So what I'm going to do first is try and get rid of the fractions in this particular equation. Uh, now if you notice, uh, we have two denominators, 3 and 4. So you've got to ask yourself, what does 3 and 4 divide into? The lowest number that 3 and 4 divides into is 12. So in order to get rid of these denominators, what we do is we multiply the whole equation by 12. So when I put the number 12 up here, here and here, what I mean is I'm multiplying this term by 12, this term by 12 and this term by 12. Um, and the reason that I'm doing it is so that I can cancel the 3 into the 12, the 4 into the 12, therefore, thereby getting rid of the 3 and the 4 from the equation. So now I've done that, 3 goes into 12 4 times, so you're left with 4 times x. 4 goes into 12 3 times, so you're left with 3 times y. And I don't divide the 2 into the 12 because the 2 is not a denominator. You can only do this with the denominator. So now I'm going to simply multiply all of these out. And this gives us 4x minus 3y equals 24. So now we've corrected this equation here. We've put it into an appropriate form. Now we can take the equation up here and put it underneath this equation. Except for maybe we're going to try and maybe match up either the x's or the y's. In this case, I think the x would be easier to do. So to get this x term to match up with the 4x here, I'm going to multiply this whole equation by minus 2. Because that will give me minus 4x underneath here. And that allows us then to cancel out the x. So just to repeat, what we've done here is we've multiplied the top equation here by minus 2 to give us minus 4x plus 2y minus 36. Now we're ready to add the two equations as these guys cancel out. So let's do that. So when once we've added these two equations, so these guys come to nothing. These two guys come minus 3y plus 2y gives you minus y. Uh, and then 24 minus 36 gives you minus 12. Uh, and then you have minus y equals minus 12. And we just need to change them to pluses. Uh, to get plus the plus y value. So y is equal to 12. Now, of course, to solve a simultaneous equations, we really need to get uh, not only the y value, but also the x value. So how do we get the x value? Some people might think you can just do the same as what we've done here, but um, there's actually a simpler way of doing that because you already know what y is. You can simply take one of the two equations here, or even this one, and substitute your y value in for y in whatever equation you pick. So it doesn't matter what equation you pick, I'm going to pick the first one here, 2x minus y equals 18. So now that we know that y is equal to 12, we just simply replace the y with 12 in the equation. So we end up with 2x minus 12 equals 18. And then we take the 12 across here, it becomes plus 12. And 18 plus 12 gives us 30. So if 2x equals 30, then x is equal to 30 divided by 2, which is 15. So we've solved that simultaneous equation. Now if you look at the second problem here, it really is the same type of problem as this one. So what we need to do here is simply multiply each term by a number that 3 and 2 divides into. So that would obviously be 6, that's the lowest number. So we'd multiply this term by 6, 
this term by 6 and this term by 6, cancel out the two numbers and proceed to solve it in the same way that we solved it here.